Let's take a look at how you might do a silent discussion in Google Slides. So what you're seeing here are a couple of slides that I've created that I feel like could house discussion comments pretty well. I'm going to want students to place their comments inside these shapes that I've laid onto the slide. So when they come to participate in the discussion, they'll see a question up at the top. They'll see some other folks' responses who have come before them. And then they'll see there's still some blank shapes that they can add their thoughts to. If there aren't any in this question, then maybe they go on to another slide after they read through the responses and they add their own thoughts. But before they get to that, before you're ready to have them get there, there's some steps, right? So first of all, you need to create slides like this or use these. I will put a link to these in my blog post today. Um, but this is pretty simple to create, okay? So I, I chose a background color for my slide and then I dragged on different shapes by going to insert shape and then I can either choose from these call outs like dialogue bubbles, thought bubbles, little flags and banners, or I can go up to regular shapes and choose like rectangles, circles, triangles, whatever I want. And then I laid them on here and I resized them, I wiggled them around a little bit and I left space for a question. At the moment, these shapes are still mobile, which is not really what I want. And same thing in the second slide that I designed. It just has different colored rectangles for different spaces for the responses. When students come into this slide and start typing their responses, I don't want them to have the ability to move these shapes around. That's just gonna lead to low level chaos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to download and I'm gonna download my slide as a PNG. There it is and I'm gonna call it um, discussion background. And then I'm going to go to my next one. And I'm going to call it download PNG discussion background two. All right, now I'm going to open another slide, a blank one. I'm going to choose background and I'm going to put in the, that first discussion background. There it is. Now it looks just like the first slide, right? Except in the first slide, I can still move things. In the second slide, no matter where I click, nothing happens, which is key. So I'm gonna do that also for my second slide. And now with these two, I'm ready um, to put in student discussion questions. And if this seems like it's gonna be really hard and it's gonna take so much work to set up a discussion, what I wanna remind you is that once you get a template set up for this, you can use that same template over and over again. So you have a discussion in class, um, you use these call out slides and a set of you know 10 discussion questions. And then the next time, you use the same ones <laughs> and you and you put in different questions. It's okay to use the same design for your classroom discussion. That is not a problem. So don't feel like you have to set up a whole new um, giant set of designs every time you do this. You're just going to go in. Let's say you're using this one for your discussion. Um, you'd make a few of them. And you would just copying and pasting those slides and you would put in the questions that you wanted so insert text box let's say um what is the key theme of long way down in your opinion and to make things really simple you can even put in little text boxes for students to type into. So you can put, insert your comment here. Now, rather than type that over again, I'm gonna go duplicate, insert your comment here. And I'm gonna go duplicate, 
insert your comment here. You get the idea, right? So now students can come in, if this is my slideshow, they see the question, they can put their comment into one of the boxes, they can read everybody else's comments, and then they can go to the next slide and see the next question. Now, it's probably gonna be hard to fit bubbles for every single kid in the class on every single slide. So what I recommend you do is, you know, you put in 10 questions or you even have students in charge they put a question on each slide as homework one night, and then the next day um, as part of class, they're going to respond to maybe three of the questions and then read through the responses on the others. I think that's a little easier than trying to um, make room for every single student in the class. So let's say you're using the other one. It would be really similar. You'd put in a text box at the top. Let's say, um, what was your... Oh. which quote quotation stood out to you as most compelling from last night's reading? And then again, I'm probably gonna center it and then I can do um, quotation here and I can duplicate that on all the slides. So again, this might seem like it's a lot of work. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. But once you get this going, once you have a system like this and you have a few backgrounds that you like, you can use them throughout the year. And quickly putting in new questions in um, blank versions of this that you create over and over again is not gonna take you very long. And you can have students do that too. I actually think this is a really fun tool for discussion. It's really simple. It's a lot easier than starting some kind of online message board account. And you can just quickly link out to it um, from within what students are already doing for you in Google. So I hope that's helpful and I hope it gets you started with silent discussion. Mm -hmm.